The, the other question is, how much would you ever put in? So, you know, I had somebody many months ago now that, that, that subscribed to our services and uh, they, they hung around for a couple of days and they said, we want our money back. So we, we thought you had all your money in stock warrants. I said, no, no, no. Nobody puts all their money in stock warrants. Nobody. Mm-hmm. It's like saying you're going to buy all call options. What? I mean, that's, that's no, this is just a, a little diversification in your portfolio that on companies that you like, this gives you additional leverage opportunities and, and a much better chance for getting that, those 10 baggers, 20 baggers, 50 baggers. Uh, th- this is what we look for. Now, me personally, uh, you know, there's been times that maybe 30% of my portfolio is in stock warrants. And I'm probably a little nervous about that, you know, sometimes. So yeah. I've got to have years. I mean, this is not... Right. This is not you have a lot of time. Years. I've got to have a lot of time. And yeah. even then you're nervous. Dudley Baker, how are you? Hey, doing great, Andy. Good, good to be back with you. Yeah, glad to have you. Um, thank you so much for joining me here. Really, I want to start out with uh, where people don't know and they're not familiar with your work as uh, some of us are. Um, give me a little bit about your background with uh, stock warrants, warrants specifically with uh, the precious metal sector uh, stocks. Well, you know, Beck, uh, the way I got started here, uh, this service tomorrow, uh, next next year will be 20 years old. I actually launched this service as what was then called precious metals warrants. I was only, this is my hot button is the precious metal sector. So my goodness, when I launched that in May of 05, there was only like 40 companies, maybe 50 companies that had stock warrants that were trading. Now, nobody in the world should just be buying stock warrants, okay? It's all, all about the mining companies. And if you find a company that you like uh, and they happen to have warrants, then you definitely owe it to yourself to take a look and see what you know, what are the terms of the warrants, et cetera. But, uh, but my focus was on setting up a database of, of those companies that has stock warrants that were trading. So thank goodness, I, I come from an accounting background, uh, majoring in accounting back in, in school, like you know, decades and decades and decades ago. But that was that was my thing. So, you know, to do the Excel spreadsheets and all this was easy for me to, to put all this stuff together myself. And uh, But then uh, in 2013, we just decided to take this into the U.S. market and pick up all of the stock warrants trading on all the U.S. companies. So now we're really sitting with a, a total database of you know eight to nine hundred companies. Now in the in the metal space and oil and gas, I mean maybe there's 100, 125. I'm just shooting from the hip here, but a good a good list of companies. But uh, but it's a massive effort to you know to get our database going with all these companies and keeping things up to date and every now and then some of the little companies if they have a rollback or something happens we've got to monitor this so but it's been it's been quite a journey and it uh, afforded me the opportunity to meet a lot of people in our industry at the at the at the conferences uh, more more often than not several years back yeah where i knew the rick rule uh, met james turk uh, you know joe martin there at the vancouver conferences and uh, Frank Holmes, of course, and I've been I had the opportunity to visit with Frank and his team in San Antonio, Texas, where I'm actually from myself. And so it was good going back when mom and dad were alive to actually set up meetings with Frank Holmes and go in and visit with him and the, and the whole the whole gang that he's got. And it's just really been a uh, an interesting journey for me. You know, not being, I guess so many people in the business have got the mining experience behind them as a, as a GO or, or something, but where me just coming in straight as a, basically an accountant. So a lot of times when I'm looking at a company, I'm looking at it just a little bit differently uh, than a GO might be looking at it. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I don't understand a, a lot of all the geo, the geo terms and what we're looking for. I've been I've been on a lot of mining tours. I've been on tours with Bob Moriarty and, and Gordon Holmes, uh, you know, with Streetwise and 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 a lot of other guys. Uh, but it's where where other guys have got the expertise. I kind of go along for the ride, 
And then I take that and then I'm always going to put the twist on it is, uh, well, what are the insiders doing? What are the insiders? So I'm a big guy following the insiders. And then we put the twist on it. Yeah, we want to see good management names. But yeah, but what are they doing? Are they buying the company? Are they selling the company? You know, so I just try to package the whole the whole situation up. And, uh, and so I, I just come at it from a little bit different background and, uh, and I enjoy doing this, uh, myself. So it's a little, little different approach than what most of the guys in the business are doing, but it's been a great journey for, for roughly 20 years. And this is my hot button with the, with the mining stocks and, uh, let's face it, we're all just waiting for our day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for our listeners and viewers who don't know, uh, Dudley and I were talking off, uh, right before we started off camera and uh, mm-hmm. Dudley and I were on a conference call literally probably 15, 20 years ago. I can't remember the exact date, but it was yeah. for, uh, it was for some natural resource stocks. So that was my first intro to you, but back to what you do, I would venture to say most people, I would highly advocate taking it, look at it, this sector from a, an accountant's perspective, actually. And very few people actually do that. They get wrapped up in the emotion or they mm-hmm. get wrapped up in the drill results, if you would. Um, so if we could, and there's not a whole lot of people that are doing exactly what you're doing, which is what I would say is the accounting with warrants. So let's peel that layer back a little bit. Let's first talk about value. What you what do you look for an accounting perspective value in a company? What's the number one thing? If you're looking at some of the bigger mining companies, now you've got some numbers to work with. You know, I mean, if they've got production, they've got whatever. Uh, those that might just be in the development stage, well, now what are, what are we looking at? We're looking at, at anticipated, you know, revenue or whatever. When you get down to the little micro caps, the little uh, exploration companies, what the hell do we have to look at? I mean, that, that, that's the challenging thing, I think, for all investors. But now I love these little ones. And, and that's where a lot of times about all you have to go with is maybe location of the properties that they have, uh, the management team, who are these guys? And you can see what they've done in the past. Uh, and uh, and if, if you have the opportunity to, to visit the mine, you get to know things a little bit better, maybe. I always look and say, uh, go to my sources and say, what are they doing? It's one thing to be talking to them. And it's just one interesting story that... Uh, uh, years ago now, I, and the company's out of business, thank goodness, but I was on a mine tour. There were two different companies together, and one I was unfamiliar with management, et cetera. The other other team I knew well. And uh, so I'm visiting with the CEO of the, of the other company and uh, in introducing myself and, and, and kind of happy to hear something about his company. Uh, it was probably only selling for eight to 10 cents to 12 cents, and I love these little cheapies. You know, I just, so I wanted to hear a good story. And I said to him, I said, okay, uh, so how many shares do you own in the company? Oh, I own a whole bunch. I said, yeah, but what does that mean? What, is, what does that mean? Well, and he was really evasive. And of course, that, that doesn't fly with me. I, w- I want an answer. So I, and, I, and I told him, I said, you know, in five minutes, I can go into the company's office and I'm going to log on to the service that I've got with, where I access all the insider information. And I'm going to know what you got. So anyhow, and I did. And uh, he was not even listed as the CEO of the company. He had never reported that he was the CEO of the company. And then he confessed. He confessed that he was in the, in, in the middle of a divorce. He didn't want to, you know, he didn't want the spouse to know about all this stuff. So the deal is, did I buy shares? Uh, no, of course not. You know, I just stayed away from that. But it was like interesting. You need to, you know, you know, trust and verify and all this kind of stuff and uh, get to an independent source. So that just proved out to be a, a, a great long term example that I'll always use. And just, you know, you know, none of us like to be kind of deceived or, or lied to or whatever we want to say. But uh, just just a great story. But but back to your question, it, it really is difficult to get a handle on these 
you know, young junior companies and ex these exploration companies. Uh, and, uh, and, and they will always be the last ones to move, you know, uh, in, in the market that we're looking for coming up. Now, we know a lot of the producers have done fairly well, you know, as gold has come up. And, uh, but the juniors, so many of these babies are sitting damn near on rock dead bottom. And uh, I just still love to look at a chart. Uh, no, don't love to look at it, but it's an awareness, a chart of the, the TSX Venture Exchange. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. And, and basically the last four years has pretty much still been straight down when you look at that chart. And, uh, but then we wait for the time that now we're gonna spring into action uh, based on something, but we're gonna have a hell of a rally. It's gonna last a year, two years, and that will be our day. And that's what I think we're all waiting for. I wish I knew what the trigger was going to be. I don't think any of us do. But uh, but when I do find what what I deem to be something good. Now, the first thing I always do as well to go with the insiders is I look at a long term chart. I want to see the longest term chart and, and preferably a chart that the, the company has not done a rollback, a reverse stock split. Okay. then you get adjusted and all this stuff and and with these little miners i mean it's not an unusual that you do you know run into these uh, reverse stock splits i'm not a big fan but i know it's it, it happens and there's really not a lot that we can do about it uh i think the shares as long as we're just looking at buying shares and there's a rollback i can kind of justify where where we got to hang in with that if we still like the story and uh, but if that company happens to have stock warrants that are trading, we usually get beat up pretty bad. We, we lose a lot of that upside leverage that I'm looking for when I buy a stock warrant on the cheap. And uh, the reverse split just doesn't work good. Bring the warrants into to play. But uh, but yeah, I, I just like to see that long term chart. And I'm a guy that I want to buy that about as cheap as I can possibly get it. And, and right now, this is just uh, we're loaded with opportunities here uh, in today's market for a lot of these little little companies. And uh, and, you know, that when the day comes, it will be they'll be trading on on excitement. Yeah. And uh, it will, we know that day is coming. We, we see, we've seen this for numerous cycles and we're living for one more. And uh, we, I think all of us in the business intuitively know that this could start tomorrow, but we just don't know what the trigger is going to be. You know, yeah. if anybody knows it's Rick and I don't think he's sharing it with us just yet. So <laughs> but there's a, there's a trigger that these little puppies are going to, are going to come into play. And I'm the guy that always wants to be in. I'd rather be early than late because I think if you wait, I've got other, other friends that say, oh, they're going to wait for a trend development. Well, my God, by the time you get a trend, you, you're probably all up a hundred, a couple of hundred percent on some of these little uh, stocks. And uh, yeah, there is some degree of risk by coming in early, but take a deep breath. This is just the way this sector works. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be in on the on the cheap. And I mean, the only way you're going to get a 10 bag or 20 bag or 50 bagger is you're going to have to be in at, at, a, at a great price. Your interest really price right. yeah. is going to dictate that. Yeah. And uh, selling selling will be another matter. But the the, the initial entry price is got what's going to be the big, uh, big winner for you uh, down the road. Yeah, I would agree. Um, a couple of questions I have. One is, I guess, the who are they available to? Because there's some confusion about that. And it's somewhat of a rhetorical question, but I want you to answer. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, the warrants that you are buying, do you have control over the expiration date? Meaning, can you? how far out can you go? And as well as the strike, if you would. And well, just tell me all about that. How do you how do you wade through all of that? Well, let's say when you're talking about warrants, let's, let's just put there's warrants that are issued in connection with private placements. Yes. And then there's publicly traded warrants. Correct. And I'm now, the first. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and that's a lot of people's exposure. I mean, especially probably those in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're more, you're closer to the companies maybe, and maybe you're offered the opportunity or, uh, to participate in private placement. And, uh, 
yeah, that, that was my situation many, many years ago. And it's like, I think I was so excited. I, I think it was some Gustra deal, you know, way back and Frank Holmes and, and uh, <laughs> no, they, they got me into something. I didn't even know what the hell it was, but I was so freaking flattered to be invited to participate in their private placement. But the deal is with the, and with the private placements, and let's say but in the mining sector anyway, we're pretty much talking about uh, the all Canadian companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so when they do a private placement, uh, those will usually stay private. Uh, it is up to the, the management team and their financial advisors, whether they want those, pub those warrants to trade publicly or not. That's, that's their internal decision. Uh, some of the individuals in the business love stock warrants. They, the CEOs, they want a stock warrant. But if they can get it, they want it. Mm -hmm. uh, other ones don't want it. And so it's just a different philosophy. But there's enough out there that trade, which are great. But, uh, but no, it's, it's just a big difference. But those, uh, for the most part, they trade in the, on, on the TSS, uh, TSX uh, venture or the Toronto Exchange and uh, set trade just like a stock. I mean, they've got a stock symbol and everything, so it's not much different than buying the shares. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just got a .wt on the end of it. In the US, it might have a .ws at the end of it. But in our database, we've got all of this information right at your fingertips. I mean, exercise price, expiration date. It, it is so important. You need to know when, when do these warrants expire? Yep. But again, before you get before we even get to that question, I always say of oh, a stock warrant on what? Yeah. It's a warrant on the underlying company. So mm -hmm. that should already be a company that you like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you could be going through our database, let's say the subscriber is going through the database and see a, a company. Oh, that sounds familiar. Okay, and yeah, maybe they're not all that familiar, but we've got links back to companies' websites, uh, now links back to insider trading on all of the companies in our database, just a wealth, a wealth of, of information on all the companies, whether they're in the US, uh, whether they're tech companies, biotech companies, whatever. I mean, we're, we're sitting with eight, eight to 900 companies probably totally in the database. Mm -hmm. And we've got it kind of uh, broken out by, by different sectors, so it makes it a little bit easier. But you can slice and dice uh, our data just about any way that you want. And uh, But I've always thought, in, in uh, my philosophy has always been, you've got to have a minimum of two years of life on your, on your warrant. That's what I want to know. It'd be, it'd be like with, a, with an option. I mean, you, you know, in our sector, what good's 30 days going to do, do you? or 66 months, or even a year. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just going by in a flash. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's pretty much, and unless you just get super, super lucky. Yeah. And on occasion, I've been lucky, but but I'd rather have the time on my side. So, uh, and, and uh, on occasion, we get the opportunity where we see the companies issue a warrant with a four-year life, maybe a five-year life. Wow. Uh, and and uh, it was a story in the oil and gas sector uh, that I recently recounted for somebody else that Occidental Petroleum came out years ago. Uh, that warrant is still trading. It came out with a seven-year life. Well, you know, that's a lot of time. And it traded down as low as $2 and has been up to $40, $50, and $60. So it, it, it made a hell of a turn. Anybody that picked it up at two bucks, uh, you may not still be there today and, and good for you. But yet you had a hell of a ride and had a lot of time to see a lot of cycles mm -hmm. uh, in the oil and gas sector. But mm -hmm. it's all about you want the time on your side. So the longer time you can get, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's uh, I always say there's something there's something here for everybody. Uh, but yet we've got it. It's. Uh, it's just a big basket. I say it's a big basket of, of potential opportunities. Right. And it's up to each of us to, to find those opportunities that we want uh, that, that appeal to each of us as individuals. Yeah. My, my next question is, are any of these warrants issued on the over-the-counter um, markets or are they all in Toronto, um, on the Toronto Exchange? Um, and then my next question is, um, how many of them do you typically advise? I don't want to say advise, but how many 
do you typically buy at a time relative to what kind of position you want or what, what kind of risk do you want to take on? Yeah. Yeah. On, on the, on the, on the listing. So even though they may be Canadian companies, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's frequently a, for the company now, there's always a U.S. symbol uh, for the company if you want to buy the shares. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes uh, there may not ever be a U.S. symbol associated with that stock warrant. Now, this could present some potential issues for U.S. investors uh, that uh, if you don't have access to the Canadian market where you can buy it in Canada. Now me, this this is this is no advertisement for any anybody, but this is one reason that I personally use interactive brokers. I do because, too. Yeah, because I I can I can buy the Canadian securities, and mm -hmm. if it's a warrant, uh, and if I'm looking and we got new warrants that are are being issued, or that I see, you know, I religiously follow all the TSX bulletins and the news and everything, and so stay up and on top of this. Uh, but when new warrants are issued, sometimes IB is not as timely as I want to get those warrants in their database mm -hmm. so that I can buy them and not my subscribers can buy them. So, man, I'm in a queue like everybody else. I've got to put in a support ticket, even at IB. I keep getting them to upgrade their system. The U.S., if the U.S. stock issued a stock warrant, that will be listed the same day or the next day. Totally mm -hmm. automated. Right. I cannot get to the guys in the ivory tower at IB. I've tried, <laughs> I've tried for years to get that system uh, uh, automated for all of the Canadian warrants. But usually within days, they, they uh, send them a message and they, they get those, uh, those warrants uh, listed in their database. Now, other ones, I've also got a, an account over at Canaccord, uh, mm -hmm. Genuity, that... Uh, been set up for many, many years. I don't think there's any way in the world that a good old boy from the uh, United States now could ever get a Canadian account set up for you. So this was ran through with the, with the, the, the help of some big, big players years, years ago. And since I live full time outside the United States, uh, down in Mexico, uh, they, they were able to accommodate, accommodate me and get the account set up. But basically nobody wants to deal with the U S uh, yeah, playing all this game and all this stuff anymore. So I've got a couple of different accounts and uh, that I can run things through. But yes, back to the symbols. On, on occasion, it is an issue uh, as to whether we can buy it or not. And, and IB, pretty much, Interactive Brokers, pretty much eliminates this situation for a U.S. investor. So I highly recommend if if the yeah, if you're if somebody's broker is Charles Schwab or Fidelity, I just don't know exactly how that works since I don't I don't have an account with them. But uh, if they work with you and they can buy those warrants, well, that's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. If not, then consider an account over here with at, at IB. Uh, the the other question is how much would you ever put in? So you know, I had somebody many months ago now that 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 subscribed to our services. And uh, they, they hung around for a couple of days and they said, Della, we want our money back. So we, we thought you had all your money in stock warrants. I said, no, no, no. Nobody puts all their money in stock warrants. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Like saying you're going to buy all call options. What? I mean, that's, that's no, this is just a, a little diversification in your portfolio mm -hmm. that on companies that you like, this gives you additional leverage opportunities and a much better chance for getting that, those 10 baggers, 20 baggers, 50 baggers. Uh, th this is what we look for. Now, me personally, uh, you know, there's been times that maybe 30% of my portfolio is in stock warrants. And I'm Whoa. probably a little nervous about that, you know, sometimes. So yeah. I've got to have years. I mean, this is not, right. this is not you a, have a lot of time. years. I've got to have a lot of time. And even then you're nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, but but no individual needs to have, yeah, let's just throw out whether it's 10% or whatever. And maybe, so maybe you think, well, that's not a lot of money. But a lot of these warrants, you know, that, that are trading, let's just say 10 cents or so when they start out, if you can do that. Well, you know, carve out five, 10, $20,000 out of your portfolio and say, buy you a little basket 
mm-hmm. uh, four or five companies that have got some stock warrants. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, companies that you like. And when the timing gets right in this sector, I think we're going to do well. So, but yeah, by no means are we going all in. Now, you know, in, in my service, so we've got kind of two pieces where I've got a silver subscription, we call it, that's only access to our warrant databases. Okay, you get to see all, all the data and everything. Uh, for those that are the gold subscribers, they get the added benefit of a weekly audio that I do, and I can talk about anything in the world that I want to. Uh, as well, they get to see my personal portfolio, good, bad, or ugly. Okay, and so, and and where again, probably eighty percent is going to be stocks, mm-hmm. shares in the mining space, mm-hmm. uh, shares that I like. You know, for multiple reasons, whether that's because the insiders are buying. Uh, or, or for whatever reason, you know, I, mm-hmm. I find names from a lot of different places. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you just have to pay attention if the big boys are, are investing in that. Okay. Uh, but I still want, I still want to see, I want to see the detail on the insider transaction. So we, we get this covered. So we got links to all of this data. So it's just a little, little bit different approach. Mm-hmm. But uh, but so when somebody subscribes, they kind of get a feel and uh, of, of kind of who I am. And, and a lot of these, I do have a lot of companies that basically are uh, 10 cents or less, uh, you know, uh, you know, got some that, you know, they're 20 cents. And my God, they're, they're uh, I think they they 43 101. I think I think they've got uh, they've got over a million ounces of gold in the ground. And it's being priced at like $10 an ounce. And here we are sitting at 2,600 and something. I think the company is incredibly aware that their com- their shares are incredibly undervalued at 20 mm-hmm. cents. And what are the insiders doing? We got three of them that are buying the hell out of it. Scooping it and, up, yep. And I, and I think they've already alluded to the first of the year, there's gonna be, they're gonna try to do something about this low market price for their shares. You yeah. know, so- it's like it's just it's just it's off of everybody's radar screen, and uh, so I'm in just about my average cost. But they started buying when it was twelve cents. Now we're up at twenty cents, and they're still buying. And uh, I just love these things myself. So where's it going? We really don't know where it's going, but we know we're there. We're going to be with we're going to be with the the management team, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, and and the deal that's why you want to stay with it or stay with us is what what happens next week they start selling for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, I don't think that's happened. But I mean, I've I've followed some of the insiders into transactions years ago, uh, in the pennies at, at eight, ten, twelve cent range, and then they're bailing out big time when it's up in the seventy cent range. And it's like, you know, God, you've just had a great ride. Your emotions, man, I'm not ready to sell, but it's like. You got five officers selling. What the hell are you doing here? You right. got to go. You got to go yeah. with them. You yeah. came in with them. You got to go out with them. And that that whole thing is just totally collapsed. So you just, uh, but it's such a, a different way. Uh, and what I did for, for the gold subscribers just the other day, I've gone through with the service that I've got on, on the insiders. And uh, I, I can do a lot of research uh, and, uh, you know, for companies you don't even know, all I'm looking for is insiders. And what I look for is I want to see three or more insiders buying in the open market. Mm-hmm. Just like if you were in, you and I were yep. in buying, I, I'm, I'm sure. not too excited about stock options and all this other stuff. And I mean, if they participate in a private placement, yeah, I want to know that, but, but I want to see them buying just like me. And, uh, and that's really the clue. And so I, I, I had about 15 companies that I put on my, my watch list. You know, I'm not even familiar with a lot of these companies or even the names, but they were all in the mining space. I might've been one in the oil and gas. And, uh, and I basically just carved out that, that list and, and gave, gave, it, gave it to uh, my goal subscribers. And basically, you know, I've done nothing on this, so this is all up to you. But these are, these are say fifteen companies that maybe if I had, yeah, you know, we all have limited limited funds, you know. So I'm pretty much a, 
a, a fully invested guy more often than not, you know? So you sell something that, well, I've always got something else I want to be into and uh, mm-hmm. never run out of companies to buy down at these, these low prices. But, uh, but all of these 15 were probably worthy of attention. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and just because I, I'm not able to buy them and put them in my portfolio, I thought since they came on my radar screen, I, I, I probably, I need to share this, this list with the subscribers. And so that's that's what I did last week on this. And but it's it's a revolving door. You know, there could be new sure. companies to come around the next day. Uh, and uh, so there's that that I used to have a, uh, another website years ago. I've had several different sites through the years, in addition to uh, the warrant, uh, the warrant sites. And uh, and one of them was just religiously following the insiders. And yeah. uh, and of course, you know, when you get to a really bad down cycle, Sometimes nobody nobody cares about anything, you know. You right. just so it's not unusual in some some services that you know it's your, a lot of your subscribers just kind of drift away, you know, yeah. in a nasty nasty market environment. Yeah. Uh, but in a good in a good market, this is this is really exciting stuff. But yeah. right now, when they're buying down here on the cheap, are companies that me I just have to have, uh, and uh, I'm always intrigued. And uh, probably going to start doing more interviews with some of those individual companies just to, uh, you know, get their personal story and do some chit chatting with them as well. Yeah. But, uh, let me yeah, know it's... if you want to do that. I'd be interested in helping you with that. Um, okay. Let me know. Um, Dudley, um, if somebody wants to do business and with you, where do they go? And just so everybody knows, I haven't been a subscriber, but I'm very familiar with your work, actually. Okay. And, um, um yeah where do, where do people go well commonstockwarrants.com that's a it's a long that's a long name i get it. commonstockwarrants.com but uh this will this will get you in we've got a lot of yeah you know, i'd say kind of marketing stuff we got if if you just come to the site uh we got three freebies for you all we wanted your first name and your email address and, and these are just incredible. I mean, the one, one book that I wrote, uh, Stock Warren Handbook, myself, several years back now, it's as relevant today as it ever was. Uh, it, it, and that's free. Now, ironically, I still get people that go to Amazon and, and, and pay $20, $30 for it. And it's like, I don't know why people do that. We're just <laughs> driven, giving it to you, giving it yeah. to you, you know? And, uh, and one of the other books that, that I, I just love is uh, by Sidney Freed. The Speculative Merits of Common Stock Warrants. Sidney Freed started, he was he was the warrant guru. You know, he started writing that book in 1949. And, and I got one of the original copies that I bought on Amazon or somewhere many years ago. Uh, I've, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got it all in a nice PDF file. So, and again, that's another freebie. I reached out, of course, to, to make sure that everything was legal. Well, he passed. Nobody in the family's around. Nobody cares, yada, yada, yada. It's probably like most of us. Our passion can be one thing. This could be my passion, whether whether my son decides he ever wants to follow this or, or not. That's up to him. But I'm thinking with Sidney Freed, it probably. But that, that book that he wrote was in 49. It's as re- relevant today as it ever was. Wow. And, and because the terms, the the explanations, uh, why you want to be buying warrants, what do you, and you're always looking for uh, a warrant that's going to outperform the common shares by a factor of at least two to one. Right. So you want why why do you want to take on maybe a little bit more risk? The risk being with the expiration date, uh, if there's not some reward in it for you, mm-hmm. and so it just makes so much sense. The only thing that's tr- that's changed in all those many years is the examples, the names of the companies, mm-hmm. because so many of the big companies had stock warrants that traded way back yep. you know, in the 1980s, uh, a lot of the big con- conglomerates and everything, just a lot of really cool stories. And uh, and, and that's just one example of, of one of the freebies that you get by signing up. So and and. Uh, and uh, but yeah, we've just uh, that's just how you get started. And, and uh, we've got a lot of examples. We've got a YouTube channel. Uh, so I've got a lot of personal stories, how I actually the day one found out about stock warrants, how I found out about 
Sidney Freed and what was called the RHM Warrant Survey, you know, way back in the in the in the 1970s. So, you know, it's like it's uh, I have to you know, scratch my head. Am I really that freaking old to, uh, to have done all this stuff? <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's been a great journey. Yeah. It's just been a great journey journey and a, an accumulation of knowledge now and uh, to to connect all the dots and everything. But, uh, but yeah, and then, then the only decision is like, if you, if you like what you see at the site, you like what you hear, you really just we make it simple. You only have two choices. If, if you just want the warrant database, that that's fine. If you want to know what I'm doing, then you just you subscribe to the gold service. So that's just two pieces. And uh, yeah, you just get started. You get instant access to the service. And uh, you, you know, yeah, within hours, you'll kind of know what we're all about. And uh, But it, I, I know we're talking to, to a mining crowd here probably with our audience. But uh, for those that are just curious, there, there are some other... There's probably a couple, at least a couple of, uh, of companies that have warrants in the AI space. They're smaller companies. I haven't researched them myself, but, you know, those biotech tech companies, uh, you know, uh, just a lot of different, all, all the industries and all the sectors, I always say. If there's a stock warrant trading in the U.S. or in Canada, it's in our database, regardless of what that company is doing. So there's something here for everybody, and it's just a filtering process, you know, as to as to what people want to do with it. That's what but yeah, it does get back to, uh, and and so obviously in our in our database, we are only covering those stock warrants that are trading, mm -hmm. trading on the exchanges. Okay, that you and I can go out and buy tomorrow. Uh, Arash over at privateplacements.com, they do a great job of all of the private placements that are coming up and, and they maintain that, that data and, and that's cool. And, uh, but yeah, it just, we just come at it from two different directions. So I'm always, it, 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 yeah, I know I can't, I'm, I'm limited how many private placements I can participate in. And a lot of individual investors don't get that opportunity. You know, don't don't even know about a private placement, and uh, may, maybe maybe the company they, they, some of them are already sold out. If it's if it's a hot deal, average individual wouldn't wouldn't uh, get to participate. Yeah. And then maybe you you've got to jump through the hoops on the qualifications, etc. And uh, so it's it's uh, but where and that's why over here with the publicly traded warrants. You know, we don't have any hoops to jump through. We just uh, need to make sure we have the, a, a good brokerage firm platform where it, whether it's Canadian or U.S., we've got that opportunity to buy those uh, warrants and, uh, yeah. and that be done. So to eliminate any possible uh, uh, negative that would, that would come about if your U.S. brokerage firm does not, uh, will not trade that warrant. So yeah. uh, anyhow, it's just a big, big basket of, of opportunities. Yep. And uh, we're ready for this game to get started. Yeah, you me both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all of the links in the show notes below. Uh, Deli, thank you so much. It's good to finally meet you in uh, person, even though it's via Zoom. Yes, <laughs> it's been, yes. It, it's been over a decade. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Okay, great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you.